Hi, everybody. So this lecture is all about literary analysis. So your paper, your second paper in our class is going to be about literary analysis. And uh, you'll be analyzing whatever text it is that we're reading um, based on your particular class. So here are just some general guidelines of what we're looking for with literary analysis. So first of all, it's important to understand the purpose of analyzing literature. So remember that we're reading between the lines and we're analyzing, which means that we're looking closely at what's happening in the text. Um, it's also important to remember that things that we need to um, see in literary analysis and things that we want to talk about are not necessarily those things that are on the surface and that are stated directly. Usually these things are implied and you kind of have to look a little bit deeper than just what is happening in the text. And instead, we're looking at what those things mean. Um, remember that with literary analysis, there's never one right answer. So a lot of the texts that I assign are very open-ended um, and very open for interpretation so that each student who reads that text can have his or her own interpretation of what they think is happening. So as we read literature, just like with anything else that we're reading, it's important to read actively. So you want to make sure that you're reading with a highlighter and um, some sort of writing utensil, like a pen or a pencil. Or if you're using the online version of the text, then make sure that you have some way of annotating that. So you can take notes on the side, or you can maybe use a program that lets you annotate um, the online version. So we want to do things like highlighting key passages, write questions or responses in the margins, look up words that you don't know, and look for implied meanings. So these are those things that are unsaid or not stated directly. And then pay attention to connotation. Um, so that's the implied meaning of a word or an action. So how do we figure out what's happening in a text? Um, one of the ways that we can do that is to remember to situate the text historically and socially. So we want to look at things that were going on in the text, um, not, sorry, in the text, <laughs> in the real world at the time when the text was written. So what time period was this piece written in and what sorts of historical things were happening? Like, was there a war going on? Um, was there, a, you know, were there any social movements that were happening that were relevant? So consider those things. Um, those often affect the author's message. And then we also want to look for things like themes and figurative language that might be used in the text. And we'll talk more about those in your different assignments surrounding whichever text you're reading. So when we're writing about literature, make sure that you are making arguable claims. Um, so this goes for your discussion board posts as well as when the time comes to write your essays. So claims should be focused. We don't want them to be too broad or too specific. They should be plausible, meaning they could actually happen, but they should also be interesting, meaning they're not super obvious. Make sure that your claims can be supported by textual evidence. So whatever you think is happening in the text, that's fine, but you need to make sure that you can base that in something that happens in the text, something that is written that you can then use to analyze and say, here's the evidence for why I think this thing means, you know, such and such. And then make sure that you're presenting your information in an academic way. So use a clear thesis statement, use professional language, and that kind of thing. So one way that you can develop focused claims is to use the prompt to help organize your thoughts. Um, for any essay that you're writing for our class, there's always a prompt that tells you sort of which directions you can go with writing that essay. So you should look at the prompt clearly so that you can understand what it's asking you to do, um, what order you should address things in, if, if there is an order. Um, you'll under, be able to understand if there are any outside sources required, 
And you'll also be able to see if there are any, um, what types of textual evidence you can use. So here's an example. <coughs> Sorry, if you can't tell, I'm a little bit sick still, so I'm losing my voice. I'm going to try and make it through the lecture, though. So an example of annotating a prompt. Um, using the yellow wallpaper as evidence, decide what you feel the wallpaper represents for the narrator and explain its effect on her as an individual. Use three literary analysis terms to support your claims. So this is a prompt using a short story called The Yellow Wallpaper. And you can see down below that I've annotated it, meaning I've sort of marked it up so that I can tell what I need to use, which is this story. And then I can tell my purpose or my goal, right? I need to decide what the wallpaper represents and I also need to explain its effect on the narrator. Also important here is that I need to use three literary analysis terms. So all of this would be important if I was writing an essay about this, so I know I have to kind of check these boxes as I'm writing. And you can also do a similar type of annotation um, with your discussion board posts, because even though it's not an entire essay, you, you can still look at the directions for the discussion board post, highlight those directions, or make some notes for yourself so you know exactly what you need to do. When the time comes to form thesis statements, which is going to be whenever you're starting to write your literary analysis essay, make sure that they clearly address the prompt and that they introduce your topic. You should also state the name of the text you're discussing and then hint at several main points that you'll be making throughout the essay. So here are some example thesis statements. And these are all about short stories. So for this one, in the yellow wallpaper, the wallpaper represents social views the narrator felt trapped by. So I'm clearly stating the name of the text. And then I'm also hinting that we're going to be talking about these social views and how the narrator feels trapped by those things. And then we've got a couple of additional examples. Chickamauga shows readers the dangers of war by using metaphors and vivid imagery. The short story, The Sweetheart of the Song Trabang, deals with changing gender roles that were happening in America at the time. So these are some examples of good thesis statements that are on topic and sort of help us see where the, the essay is going. So when you're getting ready to write your own thesis statement, you can sort of practice by making sure that you have all of these things happening in your own thesis. The next thing that I want to talk about in regards to literary analysis is developing paragraphs. So the main goal of your introduction is to get your reader's attention, introduce your topic, and include that thesis statement. Then you have everything in the middle which is, you know, the body of your essay, your body paragraphs. And the goal here is to develop the main claim using textual evidence. So you want to make sure that each body paragraph has a clear main claim and that you have some textual evidence to support that claim. And each of these body paragraphs should point to and help support this thesis statement. So they're all working together to show us why your thesis statement is valid. Then you've got your conclusion where instead of just summarizing the text or summarizing what you've already said, I would like you instead to discuss how or why seeing the text in this way is so powerful. So notice that in all of your paragraphs and with all of literary analysis, at no point is it necessary to summarize the text. So there's never a time when your job in literary analysis is to tell me what happened in the story. Um, I've read all of the texts that I've assigned a million times, so I know exactly what happens, and that's not really the, um, the goal here. Instead, the skill that I'm looking for with literary analysis is that analysis piece. I don't want you to simply summarize and tell me what happened. Instead, I want you to choose you know, specific points in the text and tell me what those things mean. Okay, so it's different than summarizing. We're not summarizing. 
So a closer look at body paragraphs. Remember that each body paragraph should support the thesis. And then these are just some of the types of sentences that you can find in your body paragraphs. So a, a topic sentence is an arguable claim that supports the thesis. Then you can explain that a bit and then use a signal phrase, a quote, and um, citation to use that textual evidence to help us see why your thesis, or sorry, why your topic sentence is, you know, um, plausible, why it makes sense. After the quote, make sure that you have several sentences explaining the quote. So you need to tell us sort of what is happening and why this quote is important. And then a transition sentence is nice because it helps us uh, signal that we're going to a new topic. Things that we want to avoid. Number one, make sure that you're not summarizing the text. Um, also, make sure that you understand that the narrator or the speaker of a piece is a different person than the author. The author is the person who wrote the text, and the narrator is the person who we are hearing the text from. Don't use language that's too inclusive, like obviously or clearly this means um, because of the open-ended nature of literature, we want to make sure that we use language that leaves room for other opinions to be, you know, discussed and respected. So instead you can say this can be read to mean, or perhaps what's implied here is. Some things that we do want to do. Be very specific. Don't be afraid to oppose critics. So if you don't agree with somebody, that's okay. Um, focus on small passages and explain what is happening in those passages. And generally, you do need to say more than you think you need to about a quote, because everybody comes to quotes di with different background um, and different, you know, feelings about what that means. So it's really important that you clearly state your view on the quote and sort of argue for your interpretation so that I can understand what you see happening there. So one way that we can analyze passages is using this method called the quote sandwich. So the first thing you're going to do is make a claim in your topic sentence, and that's where you tell us what's happening in the passage. Then you introduce the passage that you're using, so this is your quote, with a signal phrase. And a signal phrase is really simply just the author's name plus a verb. Then you cite an MLA, so after you've included the quote itself, then we need a citation that lets us know that the quote is ending and then we're moving on to your explanation. And the way that we cite an MLA is just with the author's last name and then the page number where we found that information. And then lastly, explain the significance. So this is that analysis piece that's really important. So let's see if my video will work here. Yes. So we've got, a, I have a short video here for you that talks about how to embed quotes and sort of uses the quote sandwich method. So I'm going to play this video for you. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you are a new if viewer, then work. hey, my name is, I am a VC in Okay, so instead of playing the video in the lecture, I will post this to this week's module so that you can watch. Um, this is a good example of how to use sort of the quote sandwich method, but for some reason the audio is messing with me and it's more hassle to make it work in here than it is to just let you guys watch it on this week's module. So this will be posted to this week's module for you. So let's look at an example of analyzing a passage using the quote sandwich method. So the first sentence here is where I'm making that arguable claim and we have this topic sentence that's in yellow. So it says, in Chickamauga, the author uses irony to show readers that the little boy is naive and doesn't understand the dangers of war. So this is an arguable claim, right? Um, it is something that is plausible, but also that people could disagree with and could, you know, talk to me about and sort of argue for a different interpretation if they wanted to. So arguable claims. Then I'm letting my reader know that a quote is coming because I have this signal phrase here. 
So for example, he writes, and then I've got the quote here, which is just a short quote. Remember to keep your quotes short. So for example, he writes, in the path that he was following sat a rabbit. With a startled cry, the child turned and ran. There's my quote. And then here's my MLA citation. This is the author's last name, and then the page number where the quote occurred, and then the punctuation. Okay, so that is the beginning of the quote sandwich method. And then notice that all of this stuff here in purple is much bigger than the quote itself. That's because this stuff in purple is the analysis piece. This is where I'm telling my readers what this quote means and how it supports this topic sentence and this claim that I've just made. So this is ironic since the little boy is alone in the woods when it's getting dark. So he should be scared of everything around him. However, instead, he is afraid of a little rabbit. This shows us that he's naive and doesn't understand the situation he's in. Just like young soldiers in the Civil War might not have understood the dangers of war. So you see that in this analysis piece, all of this is pointing back to and supporting where I claimed up here that the author uses irony and he uses irony to show us that this young boy doesn't understand how dangerous war is. So then I've got the quote, which shows the ironic, you know, um, incident of him being afraid of a rabbit. And then I have all of this analysis that explains why that's ironic. So this is what an ideal paragraph looks like when you're analyzing literature, um, both for your discussion board posts and your homework assignments, but then also in your essays as well. So notice that that um, previous slide shows all of these things, right? We're making a claim, we're supporting an analysis using the quote sandwich method, um, and then we're explaining the significance of the quote. So quick recap, when we're doing literary analysis, remember to read actively, highlighting and annotating, think critically, read between the lines, question things, make connections, analyze passages to explain what's going on, always support your claims with evidence from the text, and then make reasonable uh, claims, but make sure to remember that there are plenty of different plausible answers. Okay, so that's our intro to literary analysis. As always, see a tutor, talk to your group, talk to me if you get 